the Asics Nova Blast 4 after 100 miles, a shoe I have thoroughly enjoyed and keep reaching for time and time again. The fact that I enjoy this shoe as much as I am enjoying this shoe, even after 200 kilometers, is a big surprise to me because I did not enjoy the Nova Blast 3. And the problem I had with the Nova Blast 3 really was FF Blast Plus, the foam in the Nova Blast 3. Now, I've had a bunch more experiences with FF Blast Plus foam in a bunch of other shoes, and my experience has been consistent across all of those shoes. The problem was, when I got FF Blast Plus out of the box, the foam just kind of always felt meh to me. It didn't really feel like anything special. But after 20 or 30K of break-in, then the, sh the foam loosens up and it becomes bouncy and lively and squishy and all the stuff people say FF Blast Plus is. And that's great until about 80 to 100K in my experience where that bouncy, squishy feeling becomes mushy and spongy, which is awful. It's just the worst feeling ever. The shoe just becomes something I never want to put on my foot again. And I had that experience in the Nova Blast 3. I also had that experience in the Magic Speed 3, which is also FF Blast Plus. The thing that saved the Magic Speed 3 for me, though, was that it had the ultra stiff ASICS carbon fiber plate in it. So as FF Blast Plus broke down and became mushy and spongy, it was saved to some degree by the plate and the shoe still kind of worked. Even in the Super Blast, as much as I love the Super Blast, I still had the same problem. After about 80 to 100K, the FF Blast Plus layer, that thin layer that's at the bottom of that shoe, just became mushy and spongy. But because it complements FF Turbo so well, I didn't really have a problem with it. The shoe still felt great. And honestly, the more mushy and spongy FF Blast Plus became in the Super Blast, the better the shoe felt because it smoothed out and softened out FF Turbo. So my experience with FF Blast Plus was not exactly positive. So when I saw this shoe and I saw that it was FF Blast Plus Eco, I had very, very low expectations. This was the first shoe that I ran in FF Blast Plus Eco. It was available in the Nimbus 25 last year. I didn't run much in that shoe. I did try it on, but I didn't run in it. So this was my first experience with the Eco variant of FF Blast Plus. And like I said, I have low expectations because my experience with biofoams is that they're either very hard and dead feeling and they feel nothing like their predecessor non-bio variant, or they do feel okay, but then they break down really quickly. Well, I can honestly say the FF Blast Plus Eco in this shoe has been what I really love about this shoe. I have found FF Blast Plus Eco to be very, very consistent. So it still had that break-in period. So the first 20 to 30K in this shoe, it kind of felt meh. Not as meh as the Nova Blast 3 because of some of the geometry. I'll get to that but it didn't feel special. But after 30K, the shoe got very uh, squishy, bouncy, lively. It was fun. But the big change with this shoe is that at 80 to 100K or 160K, it was the same. The foam felt the same as it did at 30K. It was still squishy, lively, bouncy, and a ton of fun to run in. Additionally, I'm finding this foam very consistent on a run, on a longer run. I've done a few 20K runs, I've done a 28K run in this shoe, and they've all felt great. From the first couple K warm up to the end of the run, the foam was still lively, still bouncy, and still doing everything I wanted to do. So FF Blast Plus Eco is a great foam. Even in the Nimbus 26, which is a shoe I'm struggling to run in because I just don't like that shoe, I am finding the FF Blast Plus Eco Foam in that shoe the same story as this. So it's not just this shoe. FF Blast Plus Eco is the thing that really makes this shoe great. All of the properties that people love about FF Blast Plus are available in FF Blast Plus Eco very consistent through a long, long shelf life. And I have 203 kilometers in this shoe 
and it feels as good as it did when it was at 30k and i expect it to feel just as good over the next 100k as it does now it is a very good phone the second thing that i really have enjoyed about this shoe is the geometry now there's been a lot said that the geometry isn't any different than the nova blast 3 i don't know to my feet it feels like a totally different shoe i feel this rocker I feel the higher heel. This feels like a max stack, max cushion shoe. And in fact, I've been using it as that. And I put this shoe toe to toe with a lot of max stack, max cushion shoes in January, uh, in early February. And this is the one I'm still running in because this shoe's so fun. It's so lively. It's a shoe I look forward to putting on. I may have preferred the feel of the Brooks Ghost Max, but I was never excited to run in the Brooks Ghost Max. I was always excited to put this shoe on and go for a run because I knew it was gonna be fun. I knew it was gonna be dynamic and interesting. That's what this shoe is. It's great, and a lot of that is the geometry. Now, one of the key pieces of the geometry of this shoe is this, the trampoline effect, or as the ASICS product managers are now calling it, the piston. Now, in the Nova Blast 3, this was the other thing I really didn't like because it always felt like it was poking into my forefoot. Again, forefoot striker, it just always felt present. I always felt it. It didn't feel uh, bouncy. It just felt annoying. So when I saw this redesign and how much larger this is and how much more present this is in the forefoot, I was also really worried. But I can honestly say that through the course of this shoot, over 200Ks now, I've never once felt this in an annoying way. I do feel this very often when I'm running in it, but what I'm feeling is the bounce. I'm feeling the piston effect that it's there to do. I especially notice it when I'm really up on my toes and doing faster paces closer to marathon pace. There's just a little extra something off the toe. It's not like a carbon shoe. It's not like a stiff shoe because this is a very flexible shoe. It's just a little extra bounce. So the combination of FF Plus, Blast Plus Eco and this trampoline effect or the piston with this rocker geometry, there's a much to me more extreme four foot rocker in this shoe makes this shoe just bouncy, rolly, fun, lively. It has been outstanding to run in. Like I said, this is a shoe that I put toe to toe with a bunch of other max stack, max cushion shoes, and I'm still running in this one. I'm not really running in any of those other ones. So it is that good and I'm enjoying it that much. I'm still enjoying it after 100 miles or over 200K now. As with 100 mile reviews, let's talk about the durability of this shoe. So overall, I think this shoe looks great. It, it doesn't look like a shoe that has 100 miles to me. It looks, I wouldn't say new, but it looks very good. Now, I take care of my shoes. I wash my shoes. I know a lot of you have asked how I do that. I'll eventually make a video about that. But this shoe looks very good. The durability on the outsole of the shoe has been also very good. As you can see, there is some wear on the foam, but it's cosmetic. And frankly, for how much exposed foam is on the shoe, it doesn't look bad at all to me. I've run in a lot of exposed foam shoes, and this is not bad after 100 miles. Even on this, my right shoe, and I, I am very harsh on this side because I land, I supinate and land on the uh, outside of the forefoot, and on my right side, I have a little scuff or twist or something, so I really, really wear the rubber in this area on shoes. And this one's held up really well. There's definitely wear, I'm definitely wearing it down, but it's not extreme and there's plenty more life in this shoe. The other thing about this outsole is that I've had no problems with grip. A lot of people have commented that they don't have very good grip in this shoe. I would not choose this as a shoe to go run on a lot of dirt or gravel roads, but for asphalt, wet, wet asphalt, concrete, I've even done some trail running in this shoe it's fine. I've actually not had any issues anywhere. The bulk of running that I've done in this shoe for the past 100 miles or 200k has been what I would call easier steady running, which is about 30 to 60 seconds per kilometer off of my marathon pace. Now, for those easy steady runs, this shoe is outstanding. And it's one of the first ones I'm going to reach for because it is so rolly, bouncy. If I'm up on my toes, it's going to be really lively. And if it's a run where I want to pick it up for a couple K, go into my marathon pace or half marathon pace, 
I know this shoe will do it and it does it really well. So it's a good all arounder for those sort of bulk training miles. Now, anything faster than half marathon pace for me, this is not going to be the shoe I'm going to reach for just because mostly the amount of rocker in the forefoot of the shoe, I just find for the faster paces, this much rocker and this much foam just kind of get in the way. I want something a little bit lower, a little bit more traditional geometry because it's just easy for me to pick up speed in those sort of paces. This shoe will do that stuff, but again, it's not going to be my first choice. Looking forward with this shoe, this is a shoe that I'm going to keep in my little running closet. Now, my little running closet is literally a little running closet. I only have room for maybe six to eight pairs of shoes in that little closet. And that's all the storage I really have. So if the shoe stays in there, that means I'm going to be running in it. I don't keep shoes around that I'm not going to run in because I just don't have the room. So even if I like the shoe, and I, but I know I'm not going to run in it, it goes in the donation bin because I don't have the space. But this shoe sticking around, even with all of the other shoes that I now have coming my way, um, which is quite immense. I've been talking a lot about a shoe drought on this channel. That's officially over because there's a ton of releases here in Taiwan. So I have a ton of shoes to run in, but I'm still going to keep this shoe around and pull it out every once in a while because it is so fun. It is so lively and it is just so versatile that I know any time I put this on, I am going to have a great run. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If not, drop a like on this video because it helps this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.